I've spoken with a lot of editors that say, um, I really want to learn After Effects more. Basically, the only thing I can do is open up a project and change the font in it. And that's pretty common because um, After Effects is, quite frankly, a very difficult tool to use. Uh, when I first had it, I think I owned it for two years before I ever felt like I was a... Uh, uh, like I knew enough that I could feel good about charging somebody for my time. So what I want to do is I want to give you a little run through uh, of After Effects and also uh, show you some procedural stuff that we do around our office. Most of the machines in the office have a, a yellow um, uh, file here uh, called a template project and if I open that I can see it has a bunch of elements inside it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new document and I'm going to uh, give it today's date which is the, um, August 4th and I'm gonna call it uh, AE walkthrough and that's the name of the whole project and if I open up this project you can see it's empty and then what I'll do is I'll select all the stuff that I have in this folder hold down the option key so it's to make a copy and drag that in and now I have a copy of the template project and that's how that works so here's our new project and although I'm only going to be dealing with After Effects I just wanted to show you how that worked and then you'll notice this here's a inside the anim folder is a sample project okay and it's notice it's called AET now this is something I learned on uh, uh, the Twitter this weekend that if you change the AEP to AET it's a template project and now by opening that it will open up After Effects and when it's all open it will actually open up a blank version of exactly what was there so you'll see this is called untitled project AEP asterisk means it needs to be saved as well as this little black dot and the red dot there so then I'm gonna hit save and it should go it should have gone right to the same uh, folder it did not we'll go like this and we'll call it uh, we'll call this um, AE walkthrough also alright and we hit save now the sample project is laid out with some with some folders already and what we're going to do is we're going to come down into our comps folder. We're going to, by selecting it, if I come down to this little icon right here, it'll say create new composition. And I'm sure that's up here also. Yeah, look at that new composition. Uh, but this is a little easier to get to. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I made, I just made a new folder. I don't want a new folder. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to hit that little icon. And now I'm into create a new composition. And I'm going to make a, a 720 project. Uh, 2398 is probably good. We're going to make this thing, I don't know, five seconds long. And you'll notice you don't have to put all the colons and stuff. Just It, it basically reads backwards from the frame. So this will be five seconds long. The background color will be black. Yeah, and square pixels, that's important. And we, will, uh, we never want to leave these as default names. So we're going to call this uh, uh, sample. Uh, we're going to make a lower third while we're here. Lower third. Okay, now um, I'm not going to call it sample lower third because lower third is a lot of, um, it's just a lot of stuff. Now most lower thirds end up being names, so I call them names. I call it hyphen and I'll call it sample. Okay, so that's the way I do it. Now you notice this didn't go in the right place. The reason that didn't go in the comps folder here is that I didn't have the comps folder selected when I hit the button. So I'm going to drag this up here and I'm gonna put it right there okay so this is where I put my comps when I have old versions I put them in here and if I make pre comps which we'll get to someday we'll put those in there but now I have uh, a sample um, composition laid out here now I don't see anything that's transparent now if you remember if I go into composition settings it says that my background color is black but that doesn't mean it's actually a black composition that's just your uh, it's kind of your canvas that you're painting with. So if you click this little doodad right here, toggle transparency grid, this is what you're actually creating at this point. So let's make a lower third. Well, one of the things I like to do, or uh, uh, the world likes to do, is they'll have a little banner, a little box, a little uh, uh, field that they'll put that on. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to our uh, rectangle tool, and we're going to draw a rectangle. Okay, so imagine that's going to be a little thing for our lower third. We're going to change the fill of that. We're going to make it black. I'm going to click OK. All right, so there we have a little uh, banner for our lower third. Now, sometimes this thing is hard to deal with 
you have to get it just right and I also don't like that it always scales to the center but you know that you just have to deal with now if I want to um, see how this uh, relates to my um, safe title come over to this little guy there's my safe title now I might want to bring this right down to my 10 percent maybe make it a little smaller it looks a little fat and chunky so we'll go like that and now we have a shape which we might want to make semi-transparent. So how do I make it transparent? There's some key letters you need to learn. First, I'm going to show you how you get to what are called the transform tools. So if I twirl this guy down, I have contents and I have transform. So here's all the things that you can animate. Your anchor point, position scale, dot, dot, dot. Now, if you take the first letter to all of those, except for the letter T, and you just select this thing and hit that letter. So if I want to change the position, I hit the letter P on my keyboard. Oh, look at that. If I want to change the rotation, I hit the letter R. Or if I want to change the transparency, think of opacity, okay? So I hit the letter T for that. And now I can take this and I can either slide this, and you can see the transparency changing, or I can click it and type in maybe 80%. Okay, so that's a quick way to change the opacity. Now we're not going to animate it, so we're not going to make any keyframes, but um, or at least we're not going to animate the um, opacity. So next thing I want to do, let's have this thing slide out, okay? Now we're going to take about a half a second to have it slide out. So I'm doing 24 frames per second. So at 12 frames, I want this thing to live right there. I want its position to be right there. So I'm going to hit the letter P. And then I'm going to click on this little stopwatch, boom, there's my keyframe. And then let's say 10 frames earlier, maybe two frames into its life here, I'm going to take its position and I'm going to click up here, I'm going to hold down the shift key to constrain, and I'm just going to drag this thing straight off the frame. Okay, so, so now I've made a, a new keyframe there and as I drag out, it's going to land. Alright, pretty cool. So we are now officially animators. Next thing I want to do is I want to lay some text down. So I'm going to take the text tool up here. And as is the case, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, hold down the space bar. So as is the case, quite often your name is a little bit bigger than your title. So I'm just going to um, click here. That's really big, apparently. And down here is my text tool. Yeah, that's 98 points. Um, well, let's just type. Uh, we're going to type, uh, let's do my name, uh, Chris, and notice the way it's moving, it's, it's, it's moving from the center out. So if I go into paragraph, you could see I'm center justified, so I'm going to go to left justified, that's going to put it right where I wanted it. It's a little too big, I'm going to come down to character, and I'm going to scale this down, whoops, nothing scaling. Why isn't it scaling? Because I don't have the text um, selected. If I just double click on this layer, it will select all of that text. And now I can scale it down. Let me see. For some reason, the world likes round numbers. So let's do 54 points for that. Hit the arrow key so I can change its position a little. So we'll go like, yeah, I might want to do this a little bigger. We'll make that 60 points. It uh, didn't change it because I didn't have it selected. Oh, did it? I guess it did change it. I'm sorry, I looked away. And now I'm going to take this, um, boy, what is that font? I'm not a crazy fan of that. So let's select it. I'm going to come here to my current favorite font of the uh, 21st century. I'm going to make that uh, a bold. And then I'm going to take that layer. I'm going to duplicate it, Command D. I'm going to put it underneath just because that's the way my mind works. And I come drag this down with the shift key and we will change that to uh, I'll double click on the layer will give me a title video editor and we'll make this a little smaller and as is the case often when you make it smaller it's best to make it lighter maybe lighter still that was medium we'll try book and we can now make this guy bigger or we make our, uh, let's go to 80 maybe. I'll type that in because it's easier. Use the arrows. 
There we go. Now let's zoom out. I'm going to do that. I'm, the simple way to zoom is to use my little um, scroll wheel, as long as I don't over scroll like I just did. So I'm going to go one click out. So, oh, boy, that's touchy. I am going to uh, actually have a way of dealing with that. I'm going to turn off my save title for a second, de click everything. I could certainly come over to the left a little on those. I'm going to select these two guys. And I'm going to move them over. I'm just eyeballing this. So let's look at our animation now. So the words are already there, and the bar slides in. OK. So when the bar slides in, let's have this dissolve in, and then we'll have this dissolve in. So how are we going to animate the dissolve? First, I'm going to select the name. I'm going to select the letter T for opacity. I'm going to put one keyframe here, and 10 frames later, there's a couple ways I could do this. I could type in where I want it to go to. I could drag that playhead to where I want it to go to. Or I could use the arrow key in conjunction with the command key. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or there's another trick. If I hold down the command key and the shift key, I can just jump ten frames. You'll find that because it's easy to jump 10 frames. Quite often you do things in 10 frame increments, which is kind of lazy. But and then I'm going to come back to the first keyframe, and I'm going to just pull my opacity all the way down. Now, one thing that's really cool is I can grab those two keyframes, and I can copy them. And then I can place my cursor at the end of the first dissolve in, and I can select the title and just hit Paste, and now that will dissolve in. So we have a three-part animation. Bar pulls in name uh, dissolves in, and then the title dissolves in. And what might be nice, I'm going to select the title here. Here's another trick. If I'm not sure what is animated, I can hit the letter U, and it will just open up all the things that are animated. So what I'm going to do here is instead of having this happen totally after this, I'm just going to drag these keyframes back a little bit. I think that'll look a little nicer, that one, and then it, yeah. Okay, boom, boom. Now I'm just going to leave that up for the duration. I could animate it out, but quite often you find that in a lower third, you don't know exactly how long you want it to be up. Uh, a common thought is that, oh, they should all be up for five seconds, but that's not really the case. That a lower third should probably drop out on a pause in a sentence. It just works better that way. So I'm going to just leave this, I call it a little fat. Actually, 10 seconds would probably be fat. And now I have made um, the simplest of lower thirds. So um, I'm not going to get into the whole render queue stuff and rendering, but that is some simple stuff about how to um, animate in After Effects, the simplest stuff. Later.